Paul Jones is really an interesting character. He is the naval hero of the American Revolution. Um, he was a Scotsman. He was born in Scotland. His real name was John Paul. He was a captain, and outside of the island of Tobago, he got involved with a mutineer, killed him, and then fled uh, before he could be tried. Now, if, if Jones' version of things is correct, he was in self-defense. This guy was coming at him and trying to, to beat him to death, and Jones just, but it, it, maybe it wasn't that way, and Jones decided that he either, you know, had to flee or he wouldn't get a fair trial. So he came to America. He had a brother living in Fredericksburg, Virginia. He got here just about, just as the war was cranking up, he was a, an experienced mariner, and he joined the Continental Navy. He uh, was a wonderful leader um, in terms of what he was able to accomplish. But interestingly enough, he never considered himself an American. After, uh, after he captured Whitehaven and tried to capture the Earl Selkirk, he wrote a letter to uh, Lady Selkirk and said, I am a citizen of the world. I am essentially a fighter for, well, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. I am fighting for freedom, for the freedom of all people. But I'm not an, truly an American. Uh, so, you know, I'm a disinterested patriot, if you will. But he wanted desperately, he was also a, a self, he wanted to climb. And he was a self-aggrandizer, he, he, a self-promoter. And he was a wonderful naval leader. And the battle between the Bonhomme Richard and the Serapis is a, a, an important battle, not so much because of its outcome. I mean, these are two, th this wasn't even the big ships of the day. These are smaller vessels. But it proved that the American continental could fight and win because the Serapis, the British vessel, uh, a 50-gun vessel, was enough, uh, was formidable enough, and was a new vessel that, you know, it showed that Americans could fight. And the War of 1812, which is almost a, a carry-on, if you will, is the Navy's war because uh, the American Navy took this lesson to heart and decided we could fight the British vessel for vessel so that there you have old Ironsides and you had, you know, a, a series of victories by the American Navy. And I think they learned from John Paul Jones. They got the confidence they needed from John Paul Jones. And um, he also uh, brought the battle, if you will, to British waters. There were really uh, three American ca captains uh, that w operated forwardly, if you will. Uh, Lambert Wicks, Gustavus Cunningham, and John Paul Jones. Jones is the one you've heard. Wicks's ship di disappeared in the storm. Cunningham disrupted American, uh, uh, I'm sorry, disrupted British uh, merchants. He co captured a great number, and also <laughs> because he used Spain as a base, he created par problems between the Brit Britain and Spain. And uh, De, um, John Paul Jones did much the same thing in France, and also he was more successful in that he captured Whitehaven, he captured the Drake, and then he destroyed the Serapis or captured the Serapis, all of those in British waters. So he was forward, uh, he was aggressive, he won, and, uh, and he sh was uh, really an inspiration. Now, he disappears after the war. He wants to be a rear admiral. And Americans don't have any admirals, and uh, don't have, have an admiral up until the Civil War. So he gets, uh, he gets antsy, and, and he, he studies under the French, or tries to, and then he accepts a commission in the uh, Navy of the Tsarina of, of Russia. And again, he gets caught up in politics, and he's forced out of Russia, but he does conduct a, a re very successful campaign on the Black Sea. He ends up in France, He's sick, uh, and he stays there, and we actually sent him to try and negotiate, or we were, he had the commission to go and negotiate for the release of American prisoners in the Barbary Pirates, or the Tripolitan Pirates. But before he can leave, he dies. He's buried he dis, uh, in a, a Protestant cemetery. It is covered over later in France. It's in, under a warehouse. So what happens in the early 20th century President Theodore Roosevelt, Teddy Roosevelt, decides he wants an American hero. And he decides that an early American hero, naval hero, and he decides that John Paul Jones is going to be it. 
So uh, the American ambassador conducts this incredible search. They find his tomb. He has a lead casket, so it's actually his, his bones are pretty well preserved. They, can de they decide it's John Paul Jones, and they send over the, the American fleet, bring him back, and make him a symbol of American, the, um, the resurrection of American naval power. This is the 20th century. America is going to be a great naval power. We are not going to be pushed around. We are going to have a first-class fleet. And John Paul Jones becomes, you know, the, the symbol, the antecedent to this. And therefore, he is made into the poster boy of the American Revolution and of the early American Navy. If you go to the Naval Academy, if you go under the chapel, there's an incredible sarcophagus. There, there is the remains of John Paul Jones. And it really, it's a it's a feature of the 20th century as much as it is what Jones accomplished because he was forgotten really after the war. But his, um, his, he became a kind of a, a paragon, if you will, of what an American fighting naval officer should be like.